Okay, this is capital budgeting homework problems, problem number one. And it just shows you a series of cash flows for project A and B. And they want you to figure out, first, given the payback rule, with a cutoff period of two years, which projects would you accept? And secondly, given the net present value rule, with a cost of capital of 12%, which project would you accept? And explain why the results differ. Okay, so remember... The payback rule is basically saying you've got an outlay of money, in this case for project A, $5,000, and for project B, $2,000, and it gives you a specified period of time with, within which you want to get your money back. It has nothing to do with your overall return, any of that stuff, it's just how quickly do you get your money back. That's how you'll decide if you accept this project or not. So in this case, <clears throat> you can see that Project A, you you have an outlay of five thousand dollars, and then you get a thousand bucks in cash flow the first year. So then you you still have four thousand you have to get back, and then you get four thousand in the second year. So in this case, the payback period is two years, and that's the cutoff period. So <clears throat> that would be acceptable, but you want to compare it to Project B. Project B, you have a cash outlay of $2,000. You get 1000 back, so you're 50% paid off there. You still owe 1000 And then the second year, you get 1500 but you only need 1000 So that's going to take two-thirds of that year because you just kind of proportionally divide it up. You need $1,000, then you get 1500 So that's two-thirds of the second year. So it's really 1.67 years is uh, when you get your money back. And so even though this one met the two-year period, this is 1.67 years. So you would take project B. <clears throat> Part B of it is, is given the net present value rule with a cost of capital of 12%, which project would you accept? It tells the answers on here too. But <clears throat> so for part B, here it just shows part A when you go through and find out how many years it takes. For part B, you would just go ahead and get the net present value of these cash flows. Okay, and remember, <clears throat> there's a difference between present value and net present value. This is really important because in one point in these questions, he uses the wrong term. Present value is when you've got a stream of cash flows and you want to use a cost of capital or a discount rate or required return, whatever you want to say, to, to get these cash flows, see how much their present value would be discounted back to the year zero. Don't pay attention to this. So in this case, present value would take $1,000 uh, for the first year, $4,000 for the second, $3,000 for the third. Discount those back at 12% you know, to the first exponent, second exponent, third exponent, fourth. That's present value of cash flows. Net present value is you take the present value of all these cash flows and you subtract the initial investment. So that's the difference between net present value and present value. And he gets that confused in one of these questions. So again, present value is when you've taken the present value of the future cash flows and discounted those back to what their value would be at zero, year zero. Don't pay attention to this. This is a cash outlay in year, year zero. So you would, if you want to figure out the present value for these cash flows, you would take these and discount them back with using 12% and you know to the first power to the second power to the third power to the fourth power or a thousand dollars this year to the first power over the first 1.12 to the first power and so on net present value takes these the present value of these cash flows and subtracts your initial cost or initial investment that tells you really whether you're net profitable or not profitable because if you've got a positive value, once you've discounted these back to get the present value of these cash flows and you've subtracted the initial cost, if it's a positive number, that means it's a profitable venture. You've made money. If it's a negative number, it means you've lost money for the, that period of time. So that's the difference. Really important. And another thing is, too, you always put the CO, the, the first year cash flow, as a negative number in your calculator. If you don't do that, you're going to script the whole calculation. And that's because this is cash out of your pocket. You're paying this money out for that investment. These ones are cash flows in. That's why they're positive. 
these are cash flows out. Now you can have cash flows out in these years too. If you lose money this year, if you have to kick in another $3,000 here, that becomes a negative 3,000. So these can be negative. Uh, I don't know what investment that you get money in year zero uh, initially. So anyway, so if you go to your calculator and you, you put in the numbers and figure these out. And you know how to do that, but let's just go through one of them just real quick to make sure that you understand. We're going to figure out the net present value. I've already got something on there. So hit second CF, second clear to clear everything, clear the time value of money numbers. Okay, so basically it's saying in CO you had $5,000 at your initial cost. So 5000 you have to make that a negative number and you have to hit enter. Okay, now there'll, there'll be no frequency F1. That's for, for the, the, cash flow, the cash inflows, okay, or the cash flows in the future years. Okay, so the first number is 1,000. Okay, you hit enter, arrow down, the frequency is one, that's fine. The next one's 4,000. Hit enter, make sure you hit enter. If you don't hit enter, it won't go in. You go down, one's fine. 3,000, enter, frequency one, and then 2,000, enter, frequency one, down. Now you hit net present value, and it'll ask you interest rate. So in this case, we have a 12% discount rate, 12, enter, you have to enter that, arrow down, and then it'll have just net present value as zero, you have to hit compute. And your net present value is $2,488. So basically, all your future cash flows were discounted. You subtracted the original investment of $5,000, and your net present value of all that is $2,488. You go through it on uh, B, and the net present value of B actually works out to be $444.53. So you select A in that case because it's got a higher net present value. It's more profitable at that point. With those with that cash outlay initially and those cash flows, you have a net present value of $2,488. And with B, you've only got $444.53. Okay? Now, uh, it's, it says explain why the you have two different uh, answers. You would choose B with the payback rule and you, with net present value, you choose A. The payback rule really really isn't much use because if you have big cash flows up front, you'll get paid back sooner, but you may have almost no cash flows at the end, and so you really don't make more profit. For instance, let's just use a quick example. Say you had a $1,000 initial outlay, okay? And so it's $1,000 out in CF0, or C0, and then for cash flow one, you get $1,000. Okay, your payback's one year. But then for cash flow two, you have zero. For cash flow three, you got zero. For cash flow four, you got zero. So even though you got the payback in one year, you got nothing after that. So your net present value of all is the profit you made is zero in that case because you just got $1,000 back. Actually, if you discount it back to zero, you probably lost money. Now let's take net, net present value in the same example. You have a $1,000 initial cash outlay. And you only make 500 the first year, okay? You make 500 the second year. Okay, it took you two years to pay it back. So that's slower than the, the payback period of where you got the 1,000 right away. But then you get 500 the third year, 500 the fourth year, 1,000 the fifth year. Your net present value, when you add all together, all those together, the profit you made is much higher than it was for the payback rule. And so the payback rule only tells you how quick you get your money back. It doesn't tell you how overall profitable it is. So that's why the, the net present value is much better. All right, that's problem number one.